In today's episode, we're going to look at trailers from DC, Marvel, and Netflix as they have a new show coming out this week. All here on the Nation 80 Comics Podcast. <laughs> What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Michael, from the Nation 80 Comics Podcast. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as we look to bring you more content in the future. And if you haven't already, go ahead and check out Rodney's videos as he's been posting a ton of gameplay footage from the Marvel Avengers game. And I know what you're thinking. That game has received a ton of criticism for bugs and for just not being or living up to the budget that it was created. However, according to Rodney, this is a very good game. And after looking at some of the footage, I actually can't wait to play this game. Okay, so without further ado, let's talk about some of these trailers that have popped up over the last few weeks. And I gotta say, they are super exciting. I'm so excited to be living in a time where we're gonna get these movies, these great movies uh, that weren't possible when I was a kid. And we're getting them now, and we're gonna go ahead and see what DC what Marvel's got going on, and what Netflix has got coming out this week. Okay, so starting first with DC. A few weeks ago, DC Fandom came out, and they had a ton of stuff that they are previewing. A lot of it happened to be movies, some of it was comic directed, some of it was animated directed. There was even a podcast that was announced for their uh, DC universe. But two trailers obviously stood out for me. The first one we're going to talk about is Black Adam. Okay, so you know that Black Adam has been a passion project of Dwayne Johnson for a minute now. And we weren't sure if it was actually going to happen. He had been, man, he had been lobbying to play Black Adam for a minute. And if you've looked at his Instagram or his Twitter or whatever social media account that you follow him on, you could see that he would, had been training. I mean, The Rock is huge. He's always been huge, but he's just, he's huge. He's ripped. He has been training for this role, it seems like, for his whole life. And we finally, finally, we got a trailer, a teaser trailer of the Black Adam movie. While they weren't featured in this teaser trailer, the cast for this movie is phenomenal, at least to me. All right, so we've got Pierce Brosnan as he's going to play Dr. Fate. We also have Aldous Hodge, which is, <laughs> I'm excited because I love this guy. Uh, he's going to be playing Hawkman. And then we have Quintessa Swindell. She'll be playing Cyclone. And then we also have Noah uh, Centino, Centino, I can't really pronounce his name, but he's also going to be playing Adam Smasher. So we've got a pretty good cast for this movie. Now, this movie is directed by John Colette Sarah, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, and is expected to debut in July 29th of 2022. Now, while this is just a teaser trailer, the impressions are fantastic. I know when everybody looks at Dwayne Johnson, they see this big guy, uh, but when you get a look of him in this suit, all right, that opening scene where he's kind of on his knee and, uh, you know, he, he's introdu introduced by one of the actors saying Shazam. Okay, of course, you're thinking of the actual, you know, Shazam coming in there, uh, but you see Black Adam, he's on his knee. One of the mercenaries comes up to him. He grabs him by the throat, electrocutes the crap out of him, basically dusting him, turning him into a skeleton. I was like, oh, snap, that's it. That's done. Oh, my goodness. And so it sets the tone for what this movie is going to look like. I mean, it looks like it's going to be very dark. It's going to be serious. It's going to be uh, uh, dangerous. It, you know, you have the the loom of danger in this movie after you see Dwayne Johnson just, just snatch the life out of this mercenary. And the looks on the other mercenaries as they're like, oh, my God. And they start opening fire. He catches a bullet. And you see Dwayne just kind of levitate there. And it it just it looks amazing. I'm definitely looking forward to this movie. We'll definitely do an episode later just to go a little bit more in depth of who Black Adam is and who some of these supporting actors are as far as the characters they're playing. Of course, the main draw of DC fandom was the last trailer that they announced, which happened to be the Batman. And while we've seen other trailers before, we've seen other teasers before, this was a full-on trailer that kind of lent to you what the Batman movie was going to be out. 
be about, be out. <laughs> Batman stars Robert Pattinson. And I know people have been kind of hesitant to see uh, Robert Pattinson play uh, Batman, but uh, I've, I've come around and I'm pretty excited for it. We've also got Zoe Kravitz in there as Catwoman. Paul Daniel's going to play the Riddler. Colin Farrell makes an appearance as the Penguin. And again, Colin Farrell in a superhero movie, people might be a little hesitant, uh, especially from that Daredevil spot he played. And uh, I, I got to tell you, from the trailer at least, it looked amazing. He's playing the Penguin. Uh, we also have Jeffrey Wright playing as uh, James Gordon, another great actor. And then Andy Serkis is going to be playing Alfred Pennyworth. So another all-star cast. Can't wait to look forward to uh, uh, watching this movie. So some quick impressions from this movie. Uh, it opens up with James Gordon coming into what looks like a diner. And uh, he's arresting somebody. And there's this shot of a teacup or a coffee cup. And it goes up and it tilts down. And you see a question mark seemingly being the Riddler, which looked amazing. I can't wait to see that. Uh, then we also get to see Batman and he's kind of looking like he's out of control. Like he's just a raging Hulk, pretty much uh, fighting crime. And that makes sense. This is basically Batman year one and Robert Pattinson trying to figure out how to be the Batman that we know and love. Somebody that is in control, that's very methodical, that is the detective, uh, and uh, is very strategic about how he uh, instills fear in the the crime element of Gotham City. We also get to take a look at Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, and what struck me was the relationship that uh, Catwoman and Batman seem to have in this movie, and that's something that is comic lore. You know, you have... Peter Parker and Mary Jane, you have uh, Clark Kent and Lois Lane, and then you have Batman and Catwoman, and their relationship is kind of a give and take, you know, Batman is the good guy trying to, you know, stop crime, Catwoman is this person who's robbing folks, uh, but she is kind of an anti-hero at the same time, so it's going to be very interesting to see what that relationship is. And then we also got a few shots of Colin Farrell as the Penguin. And I got to say, you know, you, you can say what you want about Colin Farrell. When he does movies, and especially when he does movies where it's not his normal look, and he's having to either put on weight or lose weight or, you know, put on a ton of makeup, he does it very well. And it looks awesome. I mean, it looks awesome right now as the Penguin. He looks edgy. He looks dark. He looks like the kind of guy, nah, man, I'm not messing with the Penguin. Uh, so we got to see that, and then, as I said before, we are looking at Batman in this trailer, and it looks like he's learning how to be Batman. So look for that movie to come out March 4th of 2022, and again, we will do an episode where we go into a little bit deep dive of the characters from this movie. Okay, so let's move on to Marvel real quick. Uh, last week, Disney Plus had their Disney Plus Day as their anniversary of launching their streaming service. And they had a ton of stuff that they did where they had a section for Star Wars and a section for Pixar and then a section for Marvel. And so this really started off with a recap of the shows that they had over the last year, including WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, and then the Marvel What If. And if you haven't checked out those shows, I would highly encourage you to. They may not be totally required to uh, get what's coming up in these next uh, phase of Marvel movies, but I'm telling you right now, they're great shows. I, I think my favorite, is it's hard to tell uh, what my favorite is. I, I really loved WandaVision, and I really loved Loki. And not that Falcon and the Winter Soldier was bad, but that, that to me seemed like a separate movie that should have just been done. Uh, but between WandaVision and Loki, those are my favorite shows by far. And then Marvel What If was a very interesting show. And I thought the type of show that Disney was trying to put out to get you used to the idea of the multiverse within the MCU. And so that recap led us into three main shows that I wanted to showcase uh, in this episode. The first being Moon Knight. And all of these shows, let me preface by saying, will be out next year. Not a, there wasn't a specific date put out there. But all of them are going to be 2022 coming out. And the first one, Moon Knight. And as you know, Moon Knight is being played by Oscar Isaac. Of course, we know him from Star Wars. 
but man, the first teaser for this looked great. And we'll do a deep dive again for a, another episode where we talk about who Moon Knight is. But personally, reading Moon Knight and seeing Oscar Isaac bring it to the big screen or to the small screen, whatever streaming, uh, it looked great. You see this guy who is having some kind of mental issues. He's got multiple personalities and he's trying to figure out who he is. And it, it looked great. It, you know, it, there's an air of mystery and, and danger and some kind of, you know, craziness going on. And so we got to see Moon Knight. We got to see Oscar Isaac. It's going to be a good show. Next, we had Miss Marvel. And we got a first look of Iman Vellani playing her character. And, uh, you know, it looked really good. Uh, we get to see Kamala Khan brought to life in this uh, this teaser. And it, it looked like, uh, man, I, don't, I, I guess it looked like something that... Uh, you know, kids are going to like, of course, uh, adults like myself are going to like something that uh, people can relate to uh, in the modern day and time. And it kind of reminded me of what Spider-Man was supposed to be, what Peter Parker was supposed to mean to younger adults, to children as this guy who is trying to figure himself out while going through the daily tribulations of school and, you know, college and and you know, getting out of college and, and working and this and that. And it kind of seems this is the kind of mood that you're getting with Kamala Khan and uh, Miss, and the Miss Marvel TV show where she's trying to figure out who she is. She's trying to balance between her family life, her school life, you know, her culture. And it looks really good. And I, I'm very excited to see how they bring this whole concept of the the introduction of the inhumans because again we'll talk about this later but the inhumans at least as far as the comic books go uh were something that marvel tried to introduce to uh kind of spice up the life after you know the the mutants and so we we got a lot of great characters out of there like black bolt and now we have miss marvel and so it's going to be interesting to see how they introduce that whole dynamic uh and and if that is a segue into introducing mutants into the marvel cinematic universe okay so let's finally end up with she hulk again this will be coming out in 2022 and again man just marvel's is they're, they're just hitting it on all points now she hulk is going to be starring uh tatiana uh maslani and a lot of you have uh, I've seen her before, and uh, you know she's just a great actor. She she's a great actor, and I can't wait to see her in this show. We're also going to get Mark Ruffalo. Of course, he's reprising his role as Professor Hulk, so we're going to see what kind of dynamic they have there. We have uh, Janella Jamil as Titania, who is looking like she'll be like the main uh, villain in this TV show. And then surprisingly, we got Tim Roth, and I guess maybe not surprisingly because of uh, his appearance in uh, Shang Chi. Uh, but the continued appearance of him in this TV show uh, is very interesting to me. Um, so we've got that coming up. We've got uh, it, when we look at the, uh, the this teaser trailer, it's not much. It's not much. But when we look at this teaser trailer, we get to see a relationship between uh, She-Hulk and the Hulk, you know, Jennifer Walters. Uh, and her uh, relationship with Bruce Banner. And they, they did this cool little 1960s. It was almost kind of an homage to the original Hulk TV show where she says, you don't want to make me angry, you know. Uh, and there's some theories out there. Maybe it's a commercial that Bruce Banner did with her for her lawyer business. Not really sure, but it, it was pretty cool to see. Uh, there's a scene in there where you see her doing some yoga and trying to learn how to control her emotions, how to control her fear, her anger, so that she doesn't just straight Hulk out all the time. And then uh, we see her working as a lawyer, which is also very interesting to me because we know that we're going to get a Daredevil cameo with Matt Murdock. And this is our, our Netflix Matt Murdock. And, oh my gosh, this, again, going to be pretty awesome to see. Okay, so let's wrap this up and talk about Netflix and the show that they got coming out on the 19th of this month, and that is Cowboy Bebop. And while this is not Marvel or DC, this is a live-action version of a very popular anime uh, from back in the 90s. And man, I'm telling you right now, it looks great. Cowboy Bebop stars John Tro 
as Spike Spiegel. It's got Daniela uh, Pineda as Faye Valentine, and then Mustufa. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mustafa, I, I can't. Why can I not say his name uh, correctly? Mustafa Shakir as Jet Black, and then Alex Hassel as Vicious. And man, y'all, if you haven't seen the anime, which is great in itself, it's it's just a great. You know, Rodney is more of the anime connoisseur. Uh, my anime is very limited, but from the little anime that I, I did watch back in the day, uh, Space uh, or Cowboy Bebop was by far my favorite one. And the oppressors from the show or from this teaser trailer, just a trailer in general, were fantastic. John Cho looks great. He's already one of my favorite actors. Anyway, um, Shakir is also another favorite actor of mine. So to see them in their traditional costumes and not even just the traditional costumes, but the set pieces, the spacecraft, all look straight up. Like, they look straight up for real when you compare them to the anime. And then the music, the vibe that you get from this trailer makes it look like they put in a lot of work in the details. And I'm a big fan of that, you know. When you look at movies, like, from Marvel or from DC, and people are like, oh, the adaptation wasn't that great. And I can, I can you know get away and say all right man it doesn't have to be perfect um it, and you know these are just different versions it is an adaptation is an adaptation it's their version of how they see the character uh but from the cowboy bebop the nostalgia i get from that is amazing and the music the the character costumes how the the dialogue is it all just it all brings back those childhood vibes and i'm excited to see the show out so that will be out november 19th and we'll do an episode. I'm going to try to put up some episodes uh, that uh, for each episode that we can talk about. And uh, man, yeah, I'm very excited to see this one. Okay, so that'll wrap it up for this episode. Again, be sure to hit that subscription button. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that like button too, as it will help us out on YouTube. And if you're not watching this on YouTube and you're watching this on uh, your podcast, wherever you get them, uh, be sure to leave a comment and uh, leave a rating for us. And we will see you in the next one. Peace.